how are you? I'm Michelle, and this is my channel, Penny's Daughter Shares, where I talk primarily about cross stitch. Today, I have some quilting also and an FFO. And usually I talk some life updates now, but I think something is on everyone's mind quite often. I know it's on mine, and so I'm going to launch into my FFO right from the get-go here. And we'll talk more kind of life stuff, I guess, as the episode goes on. <laughs> so my FFO, it's actually a start, a finish, and an FFO since I last talked to you. And it is, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, it's mer, which is the Ukrainian word for peace. This is from Jacob at Modern Folk Embroidery, and it is a freebie, so you can find it on his website. And it is called Mer, a Ukrainian piece pattern. I used, he has suggested DMC colors, and I apologize, I don't remember what those are. I used DMC 798 for my blue. And I used Anchor 0291 for my yellow. The fabric I chose to stitch this on is 40 count Mallow from Zweigart. And just an FYI, I don't love it. <laughs> I mean, I like how it looks now. I did not like stitching on the fabric that much. It's a little too stiff, I think would be a good way to put it. It felt like it was really hard to pull the thread through the holes as I stitched on it. I used one floss thread over two linen threads. So I'm really happy with how it looks now that it's done. And it's hard to read because it's yellow, but I wanted it to blend with the design and I put the year 2022 in there. Not that we want to remember this year, and this is what it's for, but I felt it was appropriate. And so, and then I, basically I sewed a piece of muslin on the back of my stitch, and I sewed some ribbon ties so I could tie this on a jar. And I have long extra pieces of ribbon kind of tucked in here because I'm hoping I'm going to need to move this to a bigger jar. And I'll explain that in just a second. I had some yellow pom-pom trim and obviously the blue ribbon you already saw and just use that to kind of jazz up the top there. And we all are aware of sunflowers being the national flower for Ukraine. And I had uh, some sunflower charms, so I wanted to add that to this. So I've been thinking about Ukraine a lot. I think about it pretty much all day long <laughs> in different times. And I always try to send out positive energy. I'm sorry for getting emotional. But when I get to hug my kids and send them to school or we get to sit down and have dinner in our home and we're safe. And I could go on and on and on just that I can do laundry when I feel like it because I'm in my home. Right? Anything and everything. And I think about it all day, every day. <laughs> oh, I did not know I was going to get this emotional. As I've been thinking about it. Sending positive thoughts are nice, but I feel like, what else can I do? What can I do? What can I do? How can I send more thoughts, more, what, you know, what can I do? And this is going to be a small something, but it gives me a positive outlet for my thoughts if that makes sense. And I'm hoping that 
I can send that overseas. So here's what this jar is for. I want to fill it with pennies. And for those of you that don't know, <laughs> my mom's name was Penny. Pennies are extremely significant to me. Whenever I find them, I know that she has sent it to me and I always feel like it's a hug <laughs> when I pick it up. Um, so I'm gonna fill this jar with pennies, but those pennies are gonna represent something. So I got this idea from Christopher at Chris Cross Stitch. He is linked below. He has a floss tube and is also on Instagram. And I'm not sure if he's doing it currently. I think he did it last year where he said that he would add a penny for every comment he gets in Floss Tube, and he was going to donate that money. I believe it was the Dolly Parton books. I apologize. I don't know the name of the charity. <laughs> I thought that was a fantastic idea. And now I can put pennies in this jar every time you give me a comment. And at some point, I'm going to then add those up. And I'm going to donate whatever I can accumulate to World Central Kitchen and their efforts to help feed those that are displaced right now in Ukraine. So you can help me. You can help me fill this jar and we can have so much love and positive thoughts for those in Ukraine. Your comments do not have to be about Ukraine, although if they want if you want them to be, please do so. <laughs> uh, they can be that you liked my shirt today. I don't know. Maybe you like my glasses. Maybe you're just saying hi. <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> but that's how we're gonna fill this jar. And like I said, I'm hoping that my jar is not big enough. I have a bigger jar that I can take, untie this and I can add it back to that jar. I'm gonna sit this in my craft room so I can look at it all the time and know how many of us are thinking and sending positive thoughts and love and kindness and any comfort that we can offer. The other thing that's going to add money to this jar, although this one, instead of one penny per comment, it's going to be 10 pennies for each new subscriber I gain. So if you have not hit that subscribe button, please do so and know that that's going to add to my jar of pennies and our contribution to World Central Kitchen. I will have a link for World Central Kitchen down below also. So that is my FFO, my fully finished object, my first of the year, <laughs> and my very small way of trying to send light and love and positivity out into the world. And if anyone happens to have contacts in Ukraine or loved ones or, or you're in the Ukraine, I am thinking about you every day. So that is my FFO. <laughs> And I hope that you will help me fill this jar to overflowing. We are going to fill it with pennies. Pennies for comments and 10 pennies for new subscribers. Oh, and I should say, uh, I'm gonna get it kind of kicked off with, I don't know my exact number of subscribers currently. I know I'm over 2,500. I can't remember the exact number. I'm gonna start from the number 2,500. So let's say I have 2,550 
right now. I'm putting 50 dimes in here to get started. Okay, so leave me comments below. And as we talk more in my episode, uh, I'll have oh sort of questions for you too that you can answer and those will all count. So like I said, penny per comment and we're gonna send it to World Central Kitchen. I'm gonna set this down now. And I think you can, you can sort of see it. I can't find something to set it on so that it's very visible the whole time I'm talking. <laughs> That's the best I have at the moment. So I'll try to find something for next time. We will now move on to, uh, let's see, finishes, but also a partial March Madness discussion because I will talk about it a little bit more later in the episode, <laughs> which all sounds confusing right now, but it won't be as we move on here. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is share with you the little Instagram video that came up with the winner of my March Madness. As you can see in the little clip that it wasn't a terribly close race, although, mm, I mean, it's not extremely widespread, I guess, with 57% going to Tulip Festival and 43% going to Farm and Folk Penny Cushions. So that is a wrap up on my, I'll show you my bracket here too. That is a wrap up on my March Madness in terms of the voting. So now what does that mean? Well, Tulip Festival won. And I said, <coughs> excuse me, that I was going to fully finish the winner of my March Madness bracket. Well, today I have a finish on the winner, not a full finish yet, but I am working on plans on how I plan to fully finish it. Like I said, this is Tulip Festival from Brenda Gervais. That's a picture of the chart. Here is my finish. I love these colors. It turned out so pretty. I stitched this on 32 count. Oh, I'm jiggling here. Maybe if I do that. <laughs> 32 count Weeks Dye Works linen is the color of the linen. <laughs> I stitched using two threads excuse me, two floss threads over two linen threads. I used mostly called for colors. However, when I kitted this up, as we all are experiencing now and have before, the colors weren't all necessarily available. So for example, I don't remember the called for green off the top of my head, but I used um, Gentle Arts Avocado. And her dress, well, the bunny itself was called for in silks. I didn't use silks. I substituted Weeks Dye Works Dirt Road. And the bunny looks pretty close to the chart picture, I think. Close enough for me. And I really like how she turned out. I think she's cute in that color. And then her dress was the biggest sort of substitution I made. Although I stayed true to the design color, I couldn't find what that called for was. And I apologize, I don't remember that. I remember what I used, which is Classic Colorworks Shamrock. And I just love the variegation I got and how it turned out. I think it's beautiful. And so I'm really happy how this turned out. I don't want to talk about my FFO plans yet because I'm not sure if they're going to work. So we'll see 
uh, I will talk in general terms. I'm hoping to turn this into a bit of a wall hanging. Well, leave it at that for now. So, so that is the first finish I'm gonna show you today and the winner of my March Madness. I have another finish. So since I last had a video with you, what is that? That's three finishes, one is an FFO. Who am I? <laughs> I don't usually finish this much at one, at one time. So this finish, you will recognize possibly if you were following along on my March Madness, this was my March Madness runner up. And it is Heartstring Samplery Farm and Folk Penny Cushions. I stitched this one, which is here a peep, there a peep. Okay. And here is my finish. Isn't it so cute? Oh, the colors are just awesome. I used called for colors. They're all Weeks Dye Works colors, except for one change that I made. And I've talked about this multiple times. So I apologize if you've heard it and you're like, okay, Michelle, we got it. For anyone that's new here, <laughs> I, oh, Jeff and I both grew up on farms. This is for my husband, Jeff, to put in his office. We both grew up on farms. We both had Holstein cattle on our farms. And so I wanted that to be a black and white cow, which is everything white. else is called for colors, which is Week di Weeks Dye Works. I stitched this on 32 count natural linen, and I think it's just from a pack I got at Hobby Lobby. It's nothing fancy, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's Swig Art. Um, and I stitched two floss threads over two linen threads. And I'm pretty happy with that. And the initials and the date are both stitched over one. I still used two strands of floss when I stitched over one um, fabric thread. Those are really tight and really full. If I were to do it over again, I would only use one strand, but you live and learn. It's fine, it looks good. I'm good with it. I'm not sure when I'll get to that full finish, but eventually. <laughs> yes, that wraps up my FFO and my finishes. I want to introduce something new that I want to do on Penny's Daughters. Penny's Daughter Shares. Come on, can I at least get my own YouTube name correct? <laughs> anyway, I am calling it Penny's Spotlight. And what I want to do is I want to spotlight some other stitcher or quilter or any other craft you might have. And I will plan to share one person each episode in the Penny Spotlight. So what you can do is you can use the hashtag Penny's Spotlight down below in the comments to say that you'd like to share things or maybe you want to try to nominate someone. The other thing that you can do is send me an email and my email address is in the description box below. I am hoping that this gives us a chance, one, to enjoy lots of other people's work who maybe don't have a floss tube or an Instagram, you know, or don't want those things, but they'd like to share their work and that would be wonderful. I also would hope that we're gonna be able to all share together different things. The biggest example I can think of is stitching on Ada versus stitching on linen. If you've watched me, you know I pretty much, there. I think I've only stitched on linen since I've been doing floss tube. And there's nothing wrong with linen and there's nothing wrong with Ada. Everyone has their own personal choices. And as long as you're making a choice that brings you joy while you're stitching, that's what's important. So my first 
person that I want to feature today in Penny's Spotlight is Michelle. And her Instagram, if you'd like to follow her, I'm going to have it down here, is Michelle M. Stitches. And she sent me two projects that I get to share with you. If you have comments for Michelle specifically, you know, because I know they're gorgeous and everyone's going to want to tell her how gorgeous they are. First of all, you could go over to Instagram and find her, <laughs> but you could also leave comments below, which by the way, contribute to our pennies for comments and our Ukrainian donations. If you're leaving a comment, either place, please use the hashtag Penny's Spotlight. And I'll put that right here so you can see it. It'll also be listed in the description box. That way, in particular today, Michelle comes over, sees the video, she can go through the comments and see if you're giving her comments. So that would be really fun. And I'm hoping we get some of that. So like I said, when I showed you my jar, I was going to have sort of questions for you. Well, this isn't exactly a question, but <laughs> it's a way for all of us to contribute to the positivity in the world in more ways than one. All right, so I think I explained all that pretty well. And I'm going to then start with the first project Michelle sent me. And here is a chart picture. It is Toile Rooster by Birds of a Feather. And here is her finish. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh, I think it's gorgeous. It is stitched on 20 Count Ada. The color is Not Another Sampler by Be Stitch Me. I apologize, I'm reading from my notes because I want to get it right. <laughs> she used the called for DMC using one strand of floss when she made her crosses. She started this February 16th of 2021 and she finished it on February 26th, 2022. And she told me that she spent about 40 days of stitching time on getting it finished. So that is Twall Rooster by Birds of a Feather. All right, her second project, and here's the chart picture, is Alphabet Sampler by Birds of a Feather. And here is her first finish. <laughs> what you'll see here in this picture is that the white flowers are just stitched and there's no back stitching. And Michelle wanted me to show the difference between the two finishes, so to speak. She was not happy with the plain white flowers with no back stitching. So now I will put, put up her finish here. And now I'll go over all of the details behind this particular project. Like I said, it is Alphabet Sampler by Birds of a Feather. It's stitched on 20 count Ada. The color is I know this is French and I'm gonna guess on how I pronounce it, Cafe au lait. Is that how I say it, I hope? I didn't take French in school, I took Spanish. <laughs> it's by Vintage Needle Arts. And she stitched this using Weeks Dye Works Casper and Onyx. And she used DMC 3865 for the white flowers. And then the back stitch that she ended up adding to this project, which I have to tell you, she texted me one day and said, I, and this was after this was finished. 
and she said, I am not happy with these flowers. Should I tear them out? Should I try another white color? Because she had tried several whites to even get to 3865. And that was sort of the best of what her ideas and my ideas were. And so she just, it was like she was losing sleep over her flowers because she wasn't happy with it. And so I think that I was the one that had the idea for the back stitching on the flowers. Michelle, I apologize if I'm stealing your thunder, <laughs> but I think that I, because I also, we talked about possibly adding some buttons over the top of the flowers. So she decided to try the back stitching first, and then if it didn't work, she could always take that back out, right? So then she back stitched these flowers with Weeks Dye Works oil cloth. And now she tells me that she is very happy with how this looks. And, oh, sorry. And then the dates, she gave me dates. She started this one on January 10th of 2021. She originally finished it on March 8th of 2022. But then after adding the back stitch, her, I guess, true finish date <laughs> would be March 21st of 2022. And she told me that she's not sure exactly how many days she spent stitching this one to get it finished. So that is our Penny's Spotlight for this week. Like I said, if you have comments and compliments for Michelle and you want to add them to the comments below, please use the hashtag Penny's Spotlight. Let's discuss another idea I've had. I'm calling it Penny's Pep Talk. And one of my favorite things about Instagram in particular, I guess is a good way for now to say, is when people post and share on Instagram, I love cheering them on and encouraging them. Whether it's saying what a beautiful finish you have or you finally finished this and I just love encouraging everyone. And I'll give you a couple specific examples that will help explain this a little better. So I'll start with Michelle, who was in our Penny's spotlight this time. And she told me that she would not have those two projects finished had it not been for my encouragement and asking her how it was going and I guess you'd call it motivation. For projects that she wanted to get done, she enjoyed them, she liked them, but for whatever reason, they just weren't coming out of that whip pile. The other example that I have is Kathy from Two Needles Pulling Thread, and they have a floss tube. I will link her down below or well, her and Missy do the floss tube, but their, their floss tube will be linked down below. But this is for Kathy in particular. And she had talked to me about, she was working her way through the Brenda Gervais wordplay months also. And she was stuck on March and she just couldn't get it finished. And so I said to her, well, hey, how about, are you gonna get it out? And if you're gonna get it out, then I'll check on you, you know, next week and see how it's going. Well, she finished it in less time than whatever I said I would check on her. She sent me a message and said that she had finished it in just a few days. And she didn't have hardly anything left to do to get it done, but she just, wasn't feeling that particular one and she was keeping herself from starting the next month because she hadn't finished March. So that was really fun. And she, I think mentioned that on her floss tube that I had helped her feel encouraged to get that finished. So I'd like to share this with anyone else that would like it. 
So use the hashtag Penny's Pep Talk. And I will try to talk about some of these things on my floss tube. I'll also, uh, if you use the hashtag on Instagram and I can find you, um, you know, I can try to connect with you that way too. On floss tube, if we decide that it's okay that I share it, I will share some of these things on my floss tube, sort of like Penny Spotlight, but this is for something you're trying to get done. And we can all comment and give you some extra encouragement. And that way we can use the hashtag Penny's Pep Talk and everyone can share in this. And I've said this already in this episode, but we all, this is supposed to be really fun, right? These are hobbies and they're supposed to bring us joy. And I'm hoping this will help maybe elevate the joy that you find because you feel so good about finishing something you just didn't have, for whatever reason, the motivation to get it done. So if I can help with that, I would like to try. And if you use that hashtag and tell me something. So I think all of us have some sort of project that's lingering and it doesn't have to be cross stitch. It can be a quilt or whatever. And let me know what that is down below. And I'll share some of those next time. But this isn't just a one time thing. We're gonna do this all the time. We are going to have Penny's pep talk, and we are going to get some finishes or FFOs or whatever it is that you need to get done to make you add to the joy you feel with your stitching. And I have my own sort of Penny's pep talk <laughs> uh, example, I'll call it that. And it leads me into what I'm calling my whip this time. It's also related to March Madness or March Stitchy Madness. So let's see, I'm just checking my notes to make sure I, yes, okay. So this is what I wanna talk about. My Cured Celebration Moda Stitch Pink Quilt. Now, if you remember, this was part of my March Stitchy Madness, and I've talked about this last time, that it lost in the first round, and I really thought it was gonna be the winner of the whole thing. And one of the big reasons that I put this in my March Stitchy Madness was I wanted some extra kind of push, a little extra something to get me going on it again, because this is really important. I started this to celebrate being cured. How is this not an important project? And not something I wanna make. It is, but it was just, I was intimidated by it. Let's be honest, okay? I was intimidated by this sampler quilt, especially when I did my first block and it took me like a whole day to do the first block. And I was like, what have I gotten myself into? Like, what was I thinking? Why did I pick this out? See, we're an important project, something I wanna do, but I'm letting my own kind of voice not encourage myself to get it done. And I needed a little extra, and I got a whole lot of extra from this in March Stitchy Madness. So like I explained in my last video with my whole March Madness update was that on the day that this was up for voting and I was watching it not being chosen. <laughs> and at first I was really sad because I thought, oh, I really thought it was gonna win and I really wanted it to win. I wanted to get it done. So on that day, I made the decision that I was my goal was I was still going to try to finish the quilt top by the end of March. 
because it's so important to me and I just need to do it. Stop putting it off. Okay, so see how all of that wraps around and makes sense for Penny's pep talk? I was giving myself a Penny's pep talk. Penny's pep talk, like I said, it's going to be an ongoing thing and we're going to kind of learn as we go along what somebody needs. I don't, I don't know what it is. Obviously mine was a quilt top. It wasn't even a cross stitch. Not this time. I'm sure I have some cross stitches. <laughs> you know, but Kathy's was a stitch and Michelle's were stitches. So let me know what you need and I'll try to help you with it. And we can also ask for others to give it too. So we're moving sort of on from Penny's pep talk and into the whip portion of what I'm doing today. <laughs> so my sampler quilt, I have been working very hard at it. Before I start showing you the blocks that I have completed, I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish the quilt top by the end of March. So my revised, I'm revising my goal, I think is a good way to put it. And I'm, my goal is to have all of the blocks done by the end of March. Then I will just, just <laughs> need to put them all together. All right, so I have 18, there's 30 blocks in the sampler quilt. I have 18 blocks finished. And I'm gonna try to go in order and I know I'm gonna mess up on what block numbers are on some of these, I'm sure of it. I'll try to keep myself organized, <clears throat> if that's important to you. I don't know, maybe just seeing all the blocks is probably all that matters, really. Um, I do wanna say there are two blocks on here that are applique, applique blocks. You can see one in the second row from the top, and it is the second block from the left. And the other one is in the fourth row and it's the second block from the right. Yes, I even told you that. I'm getting the left and right correct, even though it's backwards for me in the video. <laughs> so those two blocks are applique. I have zero, what's less than zero? Negative, I have negative interest in doing the applique. It's just not, I don't, I want a piece, the quilt. And so I have planned to make uh, two different pieced blocks. One of those is going to be a heart. I've already figured that out because I would like a heart on here. And I don't remember what the other block was, uh, but I found, you know, I just did some looking online for blocks that were, the correct size that go along with this, each of these blocks. And so I'm just gonna pull those out, but I haven't done those applique substitution blocks. So I'm gonna skip over a couple of numbers and it, so I, I'm gonna try to keep it straight. <laughs> All right, here's block one. You have probably seen this before. If you've watched me for a while, this one, uh, I finished in October. I think I started sewing in October. And this was the only one I had done until March 8th when I <laughs> picked this back up. So that's block one. Now, after I finished this block, I started, I cut everything. So I have everything cut. And that took a really long time because I had to organize what I needed to cut, you know, and all of that. So anyway, okay, Let, this is block two. So 
that's black two, which I feel is quite similar to black one. But yeah, I'm overall, I am happy with how these are turning out. Now there are several blacks where I have to stop and remind myself to give myself a little bit of grace because the points aren't exactly perfect. And if you could get 100% of your points exactly perfect, please let me know how you do that because I, I couldn't possibly. So, but overall, if you look at these, they look pretty perfect. So, like I said, just trying to give myself grace. And sometimes that, well, no, that's always a challenge for myself. <laughs> this one is, yep, black three. So that's black three. And I don't know if I said, okay, I know I've told you before, I bought the kit for this um, Moda Stitch Pink Quilt, which was from 2020. I bought my kit from Fat Quarter Shop. And I don't, I know that the kit was also available from other places and you may still be able to find it if you were interested. It uses all basic gray grunge fabrics, which I love. So probably one of the reasons why I picked it for my celebration. This is block four. I think I'm holding that in the right direction. So I'm pretty happy with that one. Well, no, I am happy with all of these. Some of them were harder to sew than others. <laughs> okay. All right, so this is number five. I told you I'm trying to keep organized here. I apologize for it taking me a little bit here. So like I said, number five. And if anyone is interested in seeing these for, you know, take your time, you can see pictures of them. I have them on my Instagram. Not everything that I've done, I'm working on putting them up each day as I go along, but uh, you will be able to follow along and see a lot of them. So that's block five. Block six. This one is so, I really like this one. It was one of those ones that was hard to sew. <laughs> but I'm really, it's really cool. So that's block six. And if you go and see the Moda blog that uh, discusses all of these, or gives you the instructions for all the blocks, all the blocks have a specific name. They're not just numbered. Okay, block seven is one of the applique blocks. So I don't have that one. So this one is block eight. That's how that one looks. Another one, it's, I don't know. I look at most of these. They were a lot of work to sew. <laughs> And I still, as I'm working my way through that, so that was block eight. Um, even as I keep working on these, I'm still going, what was I thinking? <laughs> I know I will love this and be so proud of myself when I'm done. So that's what kind of keeps me going. And now that I'm getting, I feel like, how I've explained it, it's sort of like, a moving train. Once you get it going, it's really hard to stop. And so I'm, I'm feeling like a moving train. I've gotten enough momentum and I'm just going to keep going and keep rolling down the track, right? This one is number nine. I wish there were more that were all squares. 
to put together. <laughs> Number 10 is this one. And I remember this one. Mm, I can't remember exactly how far I was, how much I had sewed, but this section here on each of the four parts I had an upside down and I had to tear it apart. And I don't, I lay these out and I'm really meticulous about laying them out and working back and forth and pinning and keeping everything in order. And I, I'm still not sure how I got them in upside down, but I tore it out. Didn't really enjoy the visit with the frog, but once I got done, now I can look at it and go, that's a cool block. Okay, so that's 10. Eleven. I'm just trying to follow my list here. <laughs> Another one that's a lot of squares. Those are my favorite to make. <laughs> so that's 11. Number 12 is my favorite block that I've sewed so far. And we're gonna get down to number 20, I think, when I'm showing you. I love this house. I loved putting it together. I love how it looks. So. That is 12. Thirteen is this one. So in, it probably goes without saying, but I'll have it linked down below where you can find how to make all these blocks. Fourteen. Okay, so this one I started putting, started sewing, and I was like, "This is this really how I do this? It doesn't seem right." And so I went and found a YouTube video, and basically I had to re, I had to follow the YouTube video to make it <laughs> instead of the instructions from the Moda Stitch Pink. It sure looks cool now that it's done, but it was it was a hard one. But I love how it looks. So that's 14. Number 15. Sure looks cool, but holy smokes. That's 49 half squares. Half. I don't know the right term. Half square triangles. Half square triangle units, 49 of them. Yep, that one took a while to <laughs> get it all lined up, but it looks good. <laughs> so that was 15. All right, number 16. Isn't that a cool one? This is, it's going to be amazing when it's done. It just takes a, I don't know. It's a lot more than I had planned, I guess, or I don't know. I was just excited that I heard the word cured and I wanted to celebrate. I didn't stop and think about how much work I was deciding to take on. This one is number 17. Another one that I think is really pretty. I don't, I have all of them turn out pretty, pretty good. So that's 17, right? 
Yes. Okay. 18. All right. And I said I had 18 blocks done. This is number 18, but we just skipped one. We already we skipped one. So this is not all of the blocks. So this is number 18 in the pattern. So that's a pretty, a pretty good one too. Am I going to say that for every single one? Yeah, probably. <laughs> So that's number 18. Number 19 is an applique block. So I will substitute that one. And so this is the where I'm at. This is number 20 and my 18th block that I have done. This one I loved making. I, I don't know. It just, it worked out. It turned out pretty much perfectly. So I just really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed making it. And I think once you see it, or once I had it finished and I really liked it, that made it even better. So, so those are my 18 blocks that I have done. So I have 12 left. Two of the, two of the blocks I have left are the substitute blocks that I'm doing, that I've chosen to do. And like I said, uh, if I can possibly get 12 blocks done by the end of March, which I'm hopeful, but again, I, this is a lesson in giving myself some grace and it's okay, especially as much as I'm getting done. So, so that's where we're at with my whip because I had finishes and I have one little new start, which I'll show you in my plans. But that wraps up whips. I've received a little bit of happy mail since I last spoke with you. The first one actually came via email and it was from Marla. And she wanted to share with me and make sure that I saw on, from Michelle at Mama Loves You GB here on Floss Tube. I'll link her below. Her featured freebie this past episode that she shared on Sunday was from Threadwork Primitives. And like I said, go please go check out Michelle's floss tube in order to find it. It is, and it says Lucky, and it has a penny border. So it's a shamrock St. Patrick's Day theme stitch with a penny border and Marla said that she thought of me and wanted to make sure that I saw it. <laughs> so thank you Marla for thinking of me. The other piece of heavy mail I got is a nice little thank you note from one of my giveaway winners and she included two skeins of, this is the DMC metallic floss. I'm sure I'm probably not calling it the right thing, but it's metallic and it's multicolor. Can you see? So thank you, Pam, for your thank you note and your little extra here. Giveaways don't require that you send me something, but I sure appreciate it. <laughs> and I appreciate that you took time to write me a note. All right, let's talk collection. So... Oh, we're getting close to the end of March. Do you know what that means? <laughs> My spending freeze will be done. And guys, I, I am dying to buy some stuff that was released at market. <laughs> My list might be as long as my arm. No, that's not long enough. It might be as long as I am tall of all of my wish list. <laughs> so I, I won't buy it all, <laughs> but I definitely have several that I need to choose from. And I'm not going to go like crazy just because it's the end of March or it turns April 1st and I can go buy stuff, but I am going to go order some Nashville releases, and I'll be able to share those with you once I have them. <laughs> so
So one thing I did buy, which I don't count this against my spending freeze. And why don't I show you how it came wrapped up? I saved it that way so I could show you. And here I am tearing it open without showing you. Uh, Lady Dot Creates. She did a special collection of pins, which I'll show you here in a second, for Ukraine. And she was raising money. I believe that her donation went to World Central Kitchen also. So this is how my package came inside the mailer, which that's so nice. Here are, let me do this. There we go. Here are the pins. So sunflowers for Ukraine. I'm not sure, I think, so I didn't count this as part of my spending freeze because the money was going to a really good cause, right? <laughs> yes, and I think these are beautiful and I can't wait to figure out where I'm gonna put them. I don't think she has any left but I feel like I saw on Instagram that she is working on another something special. So, so that is something I received and I really, really enjoy them. So thank you Lois for creating those and allowing us the opportunity to help raise some money I appreciate it. Uh, the other things that I got are, <coughs> excuse me, are monthly clubs. So as I've explained before, monthly clubs, I didn't count in my spending freeze because I didn't want to miss out on my clubs. So here, the first one here is Classic Color Works Floss Pack of the Month. Oops, sorry, from Southern Stitchers Co. And let me try to spread these out. I don't know. I was trying to be quick and I'm not, I am not being quick. <laughs> and there's threads on my board here from all my quilt blocks, so get a mix here today. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right. This is what it is. So here's my mix for March. So those are some fun colors. And I would like to, I think I've explained this before. I'd love to figure out a project where I could just use these colors because they look so good together, right? People do such a good job of putting this stuff together. So sometime I am going to start working through my, my monthly floss club picks and putting things together. My other one that I've received is color and cotton. So I don't, I hope, I think I'm late enough that everyone probably has theirs by now. I hope. Let me pull this out of the plastic, it'll be easier to see. So I get 40 count linen in the neutral palette. So this one is called Limestone and mm, it's coming up pretty good on the camera, at least from my point of view. It'll probably change by the time you view this. <laughs> so it's just a really nice, <laughs> Excuse me, and there's a little bit of modeling in there and stuff. It's really nice. And I can start, I'm going to start some new things and start using some of these things. And then I get, let's see, the Primitive Neutrals 5 Skeins. I was trying to save time in that open this all up here. So those are some good colors. And then I have 10 skeins of all colors. 
I'll show you each pack at a time here. So there's five of them. Aren't those awesome colors? This one. Mm. Can't wait to stitch with stuff. Of course, I'm always trying to get other projects done. Are you, do you do that too? <laughs> Let's talk some plans. First on my plans is to get a fully finished object done with Tulip Festival. That way I can meet my goal for March Madness. My second plan is to continue working on my blocks for my cured celebration quilt with my goal being that I hope I can finish 12 more blocks by the end of March. My third item on plans is actually to show you a new start. And if I can finish this by the end of March, which I think possi is possible because sewing on a quilt and doing a full finish on my tulip festival involved me being in the craft room and I often stitch on the sofa with everybody, you know, watching TV in the evenings. So I definitely will have some hours that I can dedicate to stitching too between now and the end of March. If I can finish this by the end of March, I will still be on par? No. Oh, I can't think of the word. On track. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was talking trains earlier. You think I could remember the word track? I will still be on track for my goal of finishing all 12 word plays by the end of June. Yes, by the end of June, which means I will have stitched two each month. So I started June word play. This is number six for me. And here is my teeny tiny start, <laughs> one word. Just as a reminder, I'm stitching all of these on 40 count, picture this plus, sorry, picture this plus ancient. I am using, for this one in particular, I'm using called for colors. There may be a substitution or two in there, depending on if it doesn't quite show up on my fabric, which has happened with some of the other ones. Oh, and I just realized my needle is not on my needle minder. Hmm. And this wasn't in a project bag. I had it set aside so that we could, I could find it or show it to you easily. Okay, well, I'm going to hope that it's in my project bag and I'll go find it here when I get done. You don't want to watch me look for a needle. <laughs> but I just wanted to give you a couple of reminders. One, don't forget, penny per comment will go in this jar to be donated to the World Central Kitchen for those in Ukraine. And 10 pennies per new subscriber going in this jar. And I will show you where we're at next time with how far we've gotten and how many are in there. Also, don't forget about Penny's Spotlight. One, give Michelle compliments and comments, please, and use the hashtag so that she knows that you're talking to her. And also use the hashtag if you would like a chance to be part of Penny's Spotlight. Also, Penny's Pep Talk. Use that hashtag and let me know if there's something you need help with encouragement to get it done, get it started, work on it, whatever it might be. And I will do what I can to help with that encouragement. And with that, I will see you soon.